In this tutorial, I will show you how to compute the p-value in an F test, uh, given that we have a test statistic, or the type of the test, and in this case, we know that we're going to have to use the F distribution. And uh, to find the p-value, we're going to follow these steps. So first, we're going to draw the probability density curve. And then we'll draw the, re the region according to the type of the test. And then we'll label the areas and the test statistic. And then we will be able to compute the p-value. So let's get started. First, I'm going to draw the probability density curve. In this case, we have an F uh, distribution involved. And uh, uh, we're, not going, we're not going to try to be accurate here. So we're just going to draw some generic uh, right skewed um, density curve. And anyone will be just as good as any other one. So um, next step is to draw the region according to the type of the test. In the left tail test, we draw the region to the left side, and then we're going to label the area. So the only area here to label is the area to the left. Uh, that is our p-value by the definition. And we're also going to label the test statistic as the boundary of that region. So this is your f0, 0. 0. 0.8. Eight. And to find the p-value means to find the probability of the f uh, variable to be less than 0 0.8. To find this probability, we have to use uh, technology. Uh, you cannot find this probability using the statistical table. Um, so whether you use uh, TI-83 or Excel, um, or stat crunch, uh, you will get the same answer. And I'm going to use the stat crunch. And uh, if you follow me, you should be able to understand how all of this works and use whatever your choice of technology is to compute the p value. So, first, we're going to enter the parameters of the distribution 15 and 17. And then to find this area, we're simply going to find the area to the left of 0. 8 and that's it so in summary the p value in the left tail test is the area to the left of the test statistic and let's check if we get the right answer and that is the right answer so let's try another example Uh, let's try to look for another tail test. And before we do a two tail test, I would like to do a right tail test. And there you go. So to find the p value, we're going to follow the same exact steps. Uh, these. Uh, probability density curve and we're going to draw the region in the right side of the distribution and the only area to label here is the area to the right of these test uh, statistics so to find the p-value we simply have to compute the area to the right of the 2.1 in other words we have to find the probability of f being greater than 2.1 and to find this probability we again going to use technology. So first we're going to enter the parameters of the distribution and then we're going to enter this inequality right in there and this is our p-value. All right, now let's find the two-tail test. And there you go. So to find the p-value in a two-tail test um, steps, however, um, as we're drawing the region, it is really hard to uh, label the boundaries without having a strong intuition about this uh, probability density curve. So I really don't know whether f0 goes here or here. Uh, but 
um, the total area of the region has to be equal to the p-value, so each of these regions will, will be exactly half of the p-value. So now, which of those two boundaries is 0 0.7? So instead of guessing, we can just uh, sketch the probability density curve using technology, and then we can just uh, play with this calculator, and we can see that 0 0.7 actually belongs to the left side of the spectrum, because this probability is less than, it's the smaller of the two. Um, so we'll label this value as our test statistic. And we don't know what this value is, but the way we're going to find the p-value, it doesn't matter. Because we're going to find the p-value by first computing the probability of f um, variable being less than 0 0.7 and that will give us half of the p-value, and then we're going to compute the whole p-value by multiplying both sides by um, 2. So in our case, we already have found the probability or the area to the left of 0 0.7, so to find the p-value, we're simply going to multiply that by 2. And this is our p-value, 0.564. So let's do one of each uh, one more time. Uh, this time I'm not going to draw out a, a, the diagram every single time. I'm just going to walk you through the um, process as I'm doing it in StatCrunch. And uh, let's compute. Let's do the... We we'll just keep getting two tail tests here. The fourth in a row. Okay, there you go, left tail test. So in the left tail test, remember the p-value is simply the area to the left of the test statistic. So that's all there is to do, um, or to enter in the calculator to compute the p-value. In the right tail test, the p-value is simply the area to the right of, a, um, of the test statistic. So as soon as I generate a right tail problem, I will show you that. So in this case, we're going to enter the parameters of this distribution. And we're going to find the area to the right of the test statistic. And that's our p-value in a right tail test. Now, in a two-tail test, the hardest part is to figure out which of the uh, areas is identified by that uh, given test statistic. So, in this case, uh, what do we have? We have a two-tail test. He's, here are the parameters of the distribution. And now, I don't know if 1.1 is to the left or to the right side of the spectrum. And by looking at this uh, diagram, we can see that uh, because this is more than half, that means 1.1 belongs to the right side of the spectrum. So to find the p-value, we're going to find this area, which we already did, and we're going to multiply it by 2 because it's a two-tail um, test. So the p-value in this case is uh, this. And that's how we compute the p-value in an F uh, test. If you have any questions, let me know.